Now you're reading the translation says mankind and the Hebrew is basar. Literally, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. If the father is Jehovah, then he's the God of all flesh, right? If one of the persons, let's just assume the Trinity is true. Of course, I believe it is, but let's assume it's true. If one of the persons becomes flesh and not the other two, and the one who became flesh did so to be the servant of the father, why would it shock you then that the father becomes his God after he becomes flesh? Okay, now we got a Muslim. Where is it? Hold on. A Muslim. Here you go. A guy who was a Christian. He said he, he was a Christian. He's a Muslim. Let's see. Let's see if he's a fake. Come on, John. John, if you're a fake, you're going to mock him. I'm going to block you. Come on, John. Pick up. What happened? Yellow. John, I'm about to block you if you're going to mock. Hello? Yes, hello. Um, I've been watching your uh, live stream. Um, I'm not, I wasn't a Christian. Uh, I thought you said that. I right was here. an atheist. Oh, because I thought I read here. I'm sorry. I converted to us. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, I misread it because it said converted to Islam, but I'm being pulled to Christianity. Okay. I'm sorry. My, my misunderstanding. Forgive me, sir. But did you, were you raised in a Christian home? Uh, Normally, like they were Anglicans culturally, but okay. nothing serious. That's fine. Yeah, in other words, you didn't come out of a Muslim culture. You basically was uh, Western. But go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Ask me. Okay, so it's quite strange because it's kind of linked to the question you just had. Um, it was that, uh, mm -hmm. but there's a question like in Matthew, um, uh, Matthew fifteen four. Um, where Christ says, um, uh, let me get it so I don't misquote. Um, for God 15, said, honor your father and mother, oh, and okay, anyone yeah, who yeah. curses them. Yeah, I know that um, one. I, I hope you're asking sincerely because I know Muslims use this out of context to pervert its meaning. Because, yes, I know what you're referring to. Honor your father and mother, and what does not honor his father and mother is to be put to death. That's now an allusion to Deuteronomy 21, <clears throat> and he's referring to 18 to 21. And so uh, yeah, I know I your objection, just, but I want you to articulate your objection so I can show you how not to interpret the Bible. Yeah, I was just going to ask, is that uh, is, is the literal text of that how Christians uh, interpret it? Like, how, they, how can you? you know, like, okay. I want you to think logically because you sound like you're a logical thinker. When Jesus quotes that passage, the Jews are no longer <clears throat> ruling over the land. They're under the yoke of Rome. And as subjugated citizens of rome did they have any authority to put anyone to death now before you answer the question i'm going to give you the answer can you go to john 18 31 mm, yes I have your bible john 18 31 31 31 okay read it for me Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law, but we have no right to execute anyone they objected. So could the Jews kill anyone? No. And Jesus knew that, right? I presume so, yes. How would you presume so when he's living under Roman rule? Yes, hence I presume he, he yeah. would know. Yeah, but presume means that you're not completely certain. So I'd say yes, he, he knew definitely so. Unless Jesus was trying to start an insurrection, a revolt, he could not mean that that law <clears throat> is to be applied in his time when Israel was a theocracy. His simple point is that the law takes seriously the dishonoring of one's parents, that you have to love your parents and honor them. Otherwise, you bring God's judgment on you. And yet here you find a loophole in the law to give them the excuse to dishonor their parents. Okay, so it's um, so you don't you wouldn't uh, Christians have never th uh, thought that they were going to kill their uh, children if they disobeyed because isn't that in the Ten Commandments anyways? Well, can you show me in the Ten Commandments where it says put the rebellious son to death? 
Uh, I don't think it says that. It says okay. honor your father and mother. Right? And that's repeated in the New Testament in Ephesians 6, verses 1 to 3. Paul repeats it. You're confusing <clears throat> the Old Testament when it's a theocracy and you have judges and priests and later on kings who are supposed to govern the land according to God's legislation with the church, which is no longer a theocracy in the sense that the church is not the government. It cannot impose God's law upon its citizens and also bring about all the punishments <clears throat> that the law demands depending on the infractions committed. Why are you confusing the two? Oh, well, um, I guess out of ignorance, right? No, it's okay. Um, I'm, I'm not saying this to put you down. What I'm saying is, if you're going to read the Old Testament fairly and honestly, like I do the Quran, I know maybe some Christians don't, but I don't do that. I read the Quran contextually within its own context and its historical sources, which Muslims are the ones who reject, but put that aside. In the Old Testament, God formed a nation and gave that nation a land and gave that nation borders and then gave that nation leaders to then make sure that that particular piece of real estate was governed according to God's law. And if those people refuse, then there would be penalties, fines that would be levied, levied on them as any government, any kingdom does to its citizens. When Jesus comes, he doesn't implement a theocracy, meaning he doesn't give Christians a piece of real estate and that real estate they are to govern according to his rule. And those who fail to honor his rule will then suffer the due consequences, the penalties and the fines and so on. Because Jesus himself said, if you go to John 18, 33 to 37, read that for me. Go to John 18, 33 to 37. Um, Pilate then went back inside the palace summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Uh, is that your own idea? Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Uh, and am I a Jew? Pilate replied, your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Uh, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight. To wait, wait, read that part again. One, one time. Jesus said what? My kingdom is not of this world. Because if it was, if it was, what would it? My it, servants would fight to prevent my arrest. And then go ahead, finish it. By the by, the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Okay, right there. How oh. much plainer could Jesus make it that my kingdom is not of this world? I reign from heaven. Because if it was an earthly kingdom, then I would raise up my subjects to then kill those who are trying to arrest me and get me killed. When 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 uh, Jesus said on the um, on the on the parable, or he says, um, uh, "My kingdom uh, will be done on earth as it is in yes. heaven." Does he not also mean earth as well, though? Okay, where, where in Jesus' statements do you get that Jesus is not saying that his kingdom won't be on the earth? But who's going to impl implement God's kingdom on the earth? You, me, or when Jesus returns? Uh, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. So then that means you're not going to take Jesus and pit him against himself. Yes, God's kingdom <clears throat> will be on earth, and God will rule on earth the way he rules in heaven. But that's not a present reality. We do all we can to make it a present reality in our own lives, but the fulfillment of that is when Jesus returns, which is what the Bible teaches and what's what you believe as a Muslim. Asa's coming back to be a just ruler, right? Yes, yes. That's when thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right now, as a Christian, I do all I can to make God's will, my will, and God's rule, my rule, to the best of my ability, but I can't impose God's rule on others. That I don't have the right to do. When Jesus comes, then God's kingdom will be fully implemented on earth as it is fully implemented in heaven. Mm, I see. Okay. Um, um, can I ask one more question? Go ahead, man. No, you're not, I'm not in a rush. Uh, uh, I was going to ask something else, but I'll ask this one. If you um, remember, don't worry, I'm here. When uh, Christ says, I think it's on John, uh, 
in in the end of Apostle John's uh, Revelation epistle. Or the epistle, no, or John, because there's the gospel yeah. and the epistles. Ah, uh, the gospel, sorry. Okay, yeah. what about the gospel? And, go ahead. Uh, he says that um, I go to my God. Oh, yeah, John God 20, 17. Name, John 20, verse 17. Yeah. Turn there, yeah. How how could how would you interpret oh, this? Oh, that's easy. That's too easy. Uh, but first go to John 20, verse 17. That's too easy. You're asking me. You're, you're actually making it very easy for me, which I appreciate. But go ahead. Go to John 20, verse 17. I'm going to walk you through this. John 20, verse 17. Read it for me. Okay, it says, Jesus says, Do not hold on to me, uh, for I have not ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Did you notice it says my brothers, right? Mm -hmm. My brothers. So that means Jesus is human, and they share common ancestry. So he's human, they're human, he's in his right, they're in his right, and they believe in God the Father, he believes in God the Father. So my God and your God, my Father and your Father. Number one, notice, he doesn't come on and simply say, I'm ascending to our Father and our God. He could have made it simple and say that, right? Yes. But notice he makes it clear, he is my Father, your Father, my God, and your God. I'm explain to you why he does that in a minute. But since you quoted John 20, verse 17, then let's go to John 20, 27, 29. Same chapter, same chapter. Because I'm going to explain this, but I'm going to explain it systematically. And I'm going to explain it in the context of the Bible and not my own opinion. But first of all, John 20, 27 to 29. Yeah. Okay. Read that for me. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it to my eye. He's going to say, my God. And, uh, my, yeah. my. and he Thomas said unto him, my... Ipen alto. You can't get around this. He said to him, not to the father. The Lord of me and the God of me. And then Jesus rebuke him or bless those who would make the same confession without having to see physical proof. Mm -hmm. So Jesus blessed yeah. that confession, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now, according to the Old Testament, an Israelite only has one Lord and God and not another. Go to Psalm 35, 23. I'm going to answer your question, but you got to have to wait. If you want a real answer, you're going to have to wait as I unpack it slowly but surely. Okay, now. Uh, so, um, uh, Psalm sorry? 35, 23. Psalm 35, 23. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, awake and rise to my defense. Contend for me, my Lord, uh, my God and Lord. My God and my Lord. Right? Yeah. Okay, my God and my Lord. So notice, my God and my Lord is simply another way of saying my Lord and my God, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when this was translated into Greek, I'm going to now tell you how the Greek, the Greek, now tell me if it sounds familiar. I'm going to use, I'm going to pronounce it the Erasmian way. <clears throat> o the, theosmu kai o kuriasmu. The God of me and the Lord of me, right? That's how they translate yes. in Greek. Now, John 20, 28, Thomas said, O Kuriasmu kai o theasmu. Same thing. The God of me, the Lord of me, the Lord of me, and the God of me. Now, Thomas, an Israelite, could not call a creature the God of me, the Lord of me, the Lord of me, the God of me, because that's something that an Israelite can only say of the true God. Yet Thomas said it of Jesus, and Jesus accepted it. So you can't just take one verse out of the chapter and ignore the rest. So it is true. The Father is the God of the disciples, but so is Jesus. Father and Son together are the God of the disciples. Since the disciples can't have two gods, that means in some sense Jesus and the Father must be one for both of them to be the God of the disciples. You with me there? Yeah. Okay, now. So then why did Jesus say, my God? Well, all right. Let's go to John 1.14. Let me show you. Okay. John 1 14 read that for me um, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us so you don't among deny us. that as far as the gospel of John is concerned Jesus became flesh right yeah so right. Jesus became flesh but the father didn't become flesh right yes and the spirit didn't become flesh right Indeed, yeah. 
And Jesus became flesh to be the servant of the Father. I just want to make that clear, right? So he came to become flesh to do the Father's will, to be his servant on earth. Yeah, okay. right. Now go to Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah. Jeremiah what, sir? 32, 27. Uh, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Now you're reading the translation says mankind. In the Hebrew, it's basar. Literally, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now, if the Father is Jehovah, then he's the God of all flesh, right? Yes. And yeah. so would Jesus be the God of all flesh if he's Jehovah and so the Holy Spirit. But now, if one of the persons, let's just assume the Trinity is true. Of course, I believe it is, but let's assume it's true. If one of the persons becomes flesh and not the other two, and the one who became flesh did so to be the servant of the Father, why would it shock you then that the Father becomes his God after he becomes flesh? I don't know, because I just see it as... Um... Then ask what you see. I'm asking you according to the logic of the Bible, because your understanding, I really don't care for it, and I, you shouldn't care for my understanding. I'm talking about biblically, not how you see it, because you're not God, you don't know everything, and your sight is tainted and corrupted by your sin and your Islamic tradition. I, I just, I, from the scripture, like I just see um, uh, God as, uh, like, if you look in the Gospels, God is keep going, being the Father. Like, Christ has only called God once or twice. What has that uh, got to do with the fact that besides being called God, he says things and does things that only God can do, even according to your Quran. But that didn't answer my question. Notice what you did. I gave you the answer. You tap dance. Well, Jesus is rarely called God, but the Father is called God more often. Just like Jesus is often called Lord and the Father is rarely called Lord. Does that mean he's not Lord because he's not called Lord as much as Jesus is? Mm. And then yeah, you, uh, you, you ignored the fact. How many Lord gods can an Israelite have? Uh, one. But Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. So let's ignore it because it's not said that often of Jesus. How many times must the Bible say something for it to be true? More than once? Yeah, that wouldn't make sense, right? You got it. Uh, so now before you bring up another objection, which I'll be more than happy to answer. If we follow biblical logic, not your logic or mine, Jehovah's the God of all flesh. The Father is said to be Jehovah. The Son is said to be Jehovah. The Holy Spirit is said to be Jehovah. Yet the Son becomes flesh. The Father doesn't become flesh. The Spirit doesn't become flesh. The Son becomes flesh to be the servant of the Father. Because he became flesh to serve the Father, the Father becomes his God. What's the problem? Biblically, where, where is the problem? Yeah, I think that's why maybe they would say that they would just... Results are saying the scriptures corrupted, right? Well, they can say what they want. I use the same gospel of John who introduces Jesus as the eternal word who's with the father, who's God in essence, the creator and life giver who became flesh. So John is consistent with his own theology. If you don't like John being consistent, then stop reading John because the John, John is not a contextual and it's not unintelligible like the Quran that's all over the place.